Hello, my good friends. Very, very, very strange dream last night. I was looking, of course, at the dragon going through the anatomy, and it has a cloaca. It doesn't have, uh, it has an avian reproductive system, and this is the cloaca, and they're growing things in the cloaca. And when it died, it actually defecated here. Now, I have shown this, and it came right out of the cloacal flap. And, uh, you know, every creatures do that when they die. Now, uh, so that's what that is. That's uh, dragon poop uh, as it was killed. So I'm looking into this dragon, and I'm sort of, my mind is drifting, and I'm tired, and I'm, all of a sudden I fall asleep. So, next thing I know, I'm flying. I'm flying around like a duck. <laughs> I said, how did I get to be a duck? So I'm flapping around. I look down and I see a biblical gathering of ducks. I mean, ducks everywhere. So I said, well, that looks interesting. I'm going to go down and check it out. So I shoot down there. You know, and I start hanging around with the ducks. I said, what do you got ducks doing around here? And he said, well, you know, we're going to school. I said, what are you going to school for? He said, well, basic duck school, learn how to be ducks and do duck things. I said, yeah, that's pretty cool. I said, you know, I'm a duck too, obviously you can see. And I said, well, we don't know about your duck type around here. He said, what kind of duck are you? I said, I'm a mud duck. And all of a sudden, they they got this look on their face, which, uh, and all of a sudden, they, I said, whoa, 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 what's going on? And they said, we know about you. I said, what do you know about me? I said, I don't even know about you. How could you know about me? So we started talking. And I said, what are they teaching you in this school, duck school? This was only two most important things. Is ducks hate water. And they won't eat worms. Don't ever eat a worm. And I said, wait, let me just tell you something. You guys are going to the wrong school. That's not true. I said, ducks love water, and they eat worms all the time. They like worms. Worms are pretty good for ducks. And this met with extreme flapping and festering and jumping, and feathers are flying, and ducks are flapping, and bills are quacking. I mean, it was going like absolutely insane. And all of a sudden, I look up way up on the edge, and there's a white dove in all these ducks. I see a white dove, and I say, ooh, that's interesting. What's he doing here? And then all of a sudden, in the middle of this multitude of ducks comes a wood duck. Festooned wood duck. Totally covered in colors and fabrics of... He looked bejeweled. I mean, they are fabulous looking ducks. So, he's waddling back and forth in front of me, and he's got this paper, and he's shaking it like this, and I said, well, what's that all about? I said, I'm, you know, what are you shaking that paper at me for? And he said, do you know what this paper is? And I said, I know, I have no clue what that paper is. And he said, this is the duck rules. He said, you are outside of the duck rules, and you are so outside, I'm going to read you what the duck rules are. First one is, as they told you, we hate water. Second one is, we will not eat worms. And the third one is we kill mud ducks. And they started coming after me. I'm waddling away as fast as I could go and all of a sudden the white dove comes down. I'm gone. I'm out of there. I said, oh, oh Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I said, okay. And it was, it was Jesus. Come on, grab me, to pull me out of there. And I said, well, you know, wow, well, that, was, that was a crazy dream there, Jesus. Um, you know, is there some kind of meaning to it? And uh, he looked at me thoughtfully, and he said, did you, did you understand what, what you were just encountered? And I sort of pondered for a second, and I said, well, I know they want to kill me, I can tell you that. And he said, well, do you understand why they wanted to kill you? And I said, well, 
it appears they have rules and I, they, their rules were silly. And I t was trying to tell them their rules were silly. The ducks love water. You know ducks love water. Ducks eat worms. They said they were being bullied by that fancy looking duck. They said, exactly. And I said, well, why didn't they talk to me about it? Well, I was telling them what the right stuff was, and why wouldn't they listen? He said, don't you understand? You weren't dressed correctly. You didn't speak articulately. You were not festooned. You were not dominating. You did not strut correctly. You did not put them in their place. Now, they follow the one that has that attitude. So, I decided that I would tell you to release the final bits of information. And I said, oof, they're going to go crazy when they hear this one, Lord. And he said, well, it's time they do go crazy. He said, do you remember when I talked to you about the lady and this dragon right here? And I said, well, I do remember when you talked about the dragon and the lady. Yes, I do. Revelations 12. He said, well, let's, let's go and, and look at it. I said, yes, sir. Okay. So, here we are, Revelations 12. Now, here's the interpretation that... I got from Jesus as to how I should understand this. And this is a King James Version. I don't really deal with a whole lot of versions here. I just sort of, that's the oldest one. Let's take a look at what it says. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Now, twelve tribes, twelve whatever. There's a million twelves in the Bible. And she is on the moon. She's on the moon and clothed with the sun. The sun is surrounding her. She's on the moon. That's pretty, probably a pretty good sized creature. Now, she's being with child. She, and she being with child, cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivering her child. So what would have happened? She would have had to have her break her waters. I mean, that's the way it works. And then when they have a child, there is all of the afterbirth of child delivery. There's a placenta. There is a lot of red blood, which is hydrocarbons. And there is an umbilical cord. And the umbilical cord is literally a fibrous web of stones in a matrix that is flexible. It is virtually indestructible. That's why that baby doesn't get hurt and, and that thing doesn't get destroyed. It's a very, very, very strong substance. So, what do we have if she gave birth in space? She gave birth in space. Back here, look. It says, clothed with the sun, the moon under her feet. That's space. Now, she gave birth in space. She has her waters break, which in my mind was the great flood. It is the same pH waters, apparently, that were salty enough to preserve the flesh to turn them into mud fossils after they all drowned. Now, and then, of course, the dragon comes. Here's the dragon. He shows up, and he's got ten horns and seven crowns, and he's trying to get the baby to eat him. Now, his tail drew the third of the stars of the heaven and cast them to earth. I am finding dragons all over the earth. These were his guys. These were dragon guys. These were dragon guys. He threw them all over the earth. A third of the stars of the heaven. Supposedly there were 600 watchers. A third is 200. They were the fallen angels. There was 200 of them. It just says this. And they, he threw them all to earth. So there's 200 dragons laying around somewhere is what I'm saying and stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered and tried to devour the child to try to eat the baby. And you go back through history and it's Kronos and um, a whole batch of them ate their, their children. Now, I don't know if that has anything to do with anything. But I go back to the Titans and to the pre-Christian era because that's how it all started, just like it says. You go back into Pistis Sophia. She stole the power. Now, 
so she brought forth a man child. She had a baby. It was a man child. I don't know what that means to you. He was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Right? First time they did some nasty, nasty things to, I think, this man child. But in the end, he will rule all nations with a rod of iron this time. There's no more nails and crosses. And her child was caught up unto God into his throne. The woman fled into the wilderness. She had a place prepared for God and fed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. Then they had war in the heavens. There was war in the heavens. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The dragon and his angels fought against his angels. And there's body parts litter the heavens. I'm going to tell you that right now. That is a fact. Comets are body parts. Meteorites are body parts. The moon of Saturn, Iapetus, is a tendon enthesis ball, which in your body is microscopic, and it is their moon. And the great dragon was cast out, and that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, was cast unto the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I'm going to tell you something. This earth has been suffering from violence and war and pestilence and plague and every manner of festering nastiness since that time, is what I can determine. Prior to that, there was a golden age, there was a silver age. We're in the nastiest of times it was ever made, and it's going to roll them up, is what they say. Jesus hasn't told me any little details yet, but I think he's up there sharpening up the swords right now. And then I heard a hard, loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come the salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. And I'm telling you, when it comes, you're going to see it. I know I can tell you, I can feel it. So, woe to the inhabitants of earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you. And that's been a problem throughout history. I'm going to let you read this yourself. But, it's time to come away from the joke, and this is serious stuff. Get a little deep in this, and I can support every single word that I say with passages and absolute material evidence. I'm going to be working from some of Velikovsky's work, which he went back to the ancient papyruses and texts and museums and all of the true ancient history of this. And not just in the Middle East and Asia and Europe. He went through everywhere in the world, South America, the Americas, everywhere. They all had a very, very similar story. And it was upheaval, upheaval when the Israelites left Egypt. And it may have been that they didn't leave as a result of being let go. They might have left as a result of so much chaos in Egypt after these biblical events. The earth shook. The earth stood still. The earth changed and did this and did that. And Velikowski has the evidence and the records and it shows that Venus was literally only born 3,500 years ago. And that's when all this stuff started. This is when they were allowed to leave the confinements of Egypt. And when they did, manna fell from heaven. And all of these other events happened. The red blood fell. The stones fell. That's the placenta. The red blood is the afterbirth blood. The, the, the placenta itself is the manna. The umbilical cord is the stones. These are the things that break down. I understand this chemistry extremely well. And, and Velikowski recorded every one of those events. And then he said that Venus passed very close to Earth, caused all kind of catastrophe. And this, this I found absolutely stunning. This picture here is by a guy called James Tissett. And if you see these red hills in the background, this is the texture of flesh. This is the texture of the blood. And it, I mean, I know this so well. Now, how would he know to put this in here? Because these would have been the colors of these hills in those days. Now, guess where he lived? He inherited an abbey from his father. 
and I'm and he is a fabulous artist. You should see the things he's done. Look him up. He's unbelievable. Now this is where they're gathering the manna, and and it's just and they said there was tons and tons of it every day, and the only way they could get it was first thing in the morning. It would come out of the sun, sky, and it would come only at night because it would burn up during the day with all the extra electrical activity of the sun in in the as it came through so it just would vaporize but at night it would come through and land as these little particles and let's go look at the the story of this this all happened in um during this 40 year period following the exodus prior to the conquest of canaan now when they left I won't go through all of these, but you, you know, everybody, most people know about manna fell from heaven. That's they, that's how they survived. And this was the kind of stuff they're saying. It's similar to this look. Now, I can go along with that. But when that melts in, you know, it wouldn't have been this color. I don't think it would have been more whitish because they did say it was more white. But it would be this gooey substance in, in, in little balls like that coming through, particulating as it vaporized, coming through. The atmosphere and it would turn into little floaty things like they'd come down and been like popcorn almost now when they put this in water it turned to milk when it when it melted in the sun it turned to honey now they say it was some frost on the leaves you know that's silly now it came down they said in this according to the book of exodus manna is like a coriander seed in size but which is white. See, I told you. This explains by ancient commentaries comparison to round shape. So it was round, but it was white. That is the milk from the placenta. There's no other reason. You could come up with another reason. I'd love to hear it. Now they're coming in with some kind of honeydew balls or something. I have no idea what that's about. And then they're showing other things here. But th this guy was a fabulous artist. See, they're saying they're coming down to him from heaven. That was Jesus' body. And later he said, that was my body that fed you guys in the desert. I'm not kidding. All right, it's, Jesus said he was the bread that came down from heaven. He says, for it is my Father's will that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life. That is what I am looking for here, my friends. And I will raise him up at the last day. At this, the Jews began to grumble about Jesus because he had said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And then they keep arguing. <laughs> uh, this is Jesus that came down from heaven. They were asking, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can they say he came down from heaven? So, I'm saying he came down from heaven. I believe him. All right, I'm not going to make any claim on this, but there is statements about, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, something like that. You know, these places, they were walking through these things. You see, there's people down there. This is not some little crack in the ground. These were huge passageways that they had their arm you know those israelites were they knew these places and they were running hiding through there and as the stones came down which they did and killed all the armies up above they were down here in the shadow in a valley you know in the shadow of death i don't know that's just just a thought but there's so much can be um spoken about and you can see this is muscle right here and this actual armor um the treasury here, I've looked at inside of this, and inside it, I, I mean, this is all muscle. It's just one big chunk of bloody muscle. And that bloody muscle is just carved into. And when you go inside the treasury, there's walls in the treasury that are blood, and they had to drill holes to where the arteries were. Because normally, if an artery comes straight out, it'll run out by itself. But if it's going sort of down the wall, you have to drill holes into it to let it drain out and they did that and you can see it's very very obvious that this was gigantic creatures all of these things they were talking about seem to have happened enoch's descriptions of these things being over three thousand l's tall is very 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 obviously true and if all this stuff is true I'm going with the result is that you better do what you're supposed to or you're not going to get to heaven. And I, again, I have no horse in your race. So you could do whatever you want. But I'm just pointing out the facts because they have been hidden from you, my friend. All right, that's all I got to say, I suppose. Mudfoss University, 
Uh, and, well, let me put it this way. There is some other stuff I have to say. I'm probably going to be taking a little bit of a, a break on this, you know, a little vacation, um, so to speak. But I'll be sort of checking in here and there. I don't know. Maybe I'll be just, just doing what I'm doing. I'm sort of in flux right now. There's some... I got some things rolling around in my mind. Let me put it that way. But uh, anyway, I, oh, the, the thing I do want to say is I, 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 I have so many videos up there. I have about 600 videos now. and I, Everybody's been so kind and nice and saying thank you and, oh, this is great. I love it. And, I, and that's fabulous. I love to see that. No question whatsoever. I don't really have time to, to respond anymore. I really don't. And it's not against anybody. Or, and the other thing is I have to make a state well first of all on that first part if i respond to anybody i'm really going to have to respond to everybody so i'm sort of staying away from responding so don't think it has anything to do with you now i do love to see the very important things because i get a lot of information from you so i'm going to be reading them but you know it's just not fair to pick and choose you know um but I may ask for some more information if you do, truly do have valid information. But what I want you to do is present it to me so I can inspect it. And then I will get back to you. All right, somehow present it to me or give me an email address. That, But I, I, want, I, I can't investigate every one of them because I just get so many of them. And I really just love all you people. But I'm, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. i got to be honest with you. I'm like that duck in the middle of the sea of ducks. And I can't find my way out. You know, I started something that is uh, should be taken off on its own by now. And, and, and I would hope that you'd be mentioning this to people that you love. And you have to stand your ground. You have to say it. Because and, 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 you can see it's true. It's not a lie. And if you don't say it, nobody hears it. Nobody hears it. You're going to be alone, eating ice cream by yourself, and they're going to be screaming. It's the way I'm seeing it. Nobody knew. Nobody knew this. This is not something that you had this information and you made a mistake that you couldn't possibly ever imagine this. And nobody did. It was just a random accident that it's been uncovered. But I don't think it's a random accident. I think it's an accident that was set away long ago to occur at this time. It just happens that we are involved in it. And it is our time. That means it's your time, so it's time.